One Minute Review. Star versus the forces of evil. Ready, go! Right from the start, the premise of the show is set. It's simple, but strong. It takes a few episodes for the story to introduce the true antagonist, where things get crazy. And watching each episode, seeing all the hints that the writers dropped, and getting very invested into the plot was incredible. The show kept a perfect harmony between filler and story. Filler contained all the fun episodes, Star School experiences, Marco's Karate and rivalry with Jeremy, and the shipping subplot. And the story section contained, well, the story. The mix of relatable Earth things and an interesting story was a huge part of what made the show great. And Bon Bon the Birthday Clown is the perfect embodiment of this. In short, this story was the thing that I loved most about this show. A bit complex, but not too difficult to keep track of. The way this show worked, it never really felt like the filler was wasted time. As I said before, each lesson that was taught seemed to have actually contributed to Star's character and overall growth. And even the little things in some of these episodes would stick. But one of the best displays of continuity, and it's one of the things that I liked most about this show, is seeing how Star grew as a person. She literally learns more about being a decent person and grows from it. And her knowledge of magic and Earth grows as well. Seeing that kind of improvement really shows the continuity between the episodes. And again, it makes every Every episode seemed worth it. You see her turn into an actually decent person. Another thing is, the writers also usually made sure there was a smooth introduction to various plot points. It's insane how much charm these characters add to the show. They're also funny and unique, and the main characters were pretty well written. And even the background characters are freaking awesome. They were all surprisingly distinct, unique, and they gave the show a lot of charm. Moving away from that, the shipping was originally done really well in this show. Season 1 and 2's shipping scene was pretty good because of its realistic writing combined with its well-written and relatable characters. And that, ladies and gentlemen, are the various reasons why Star vs. the Forces of Evil used to be great. Something that is exceptionally rare during these latter two seasons. Oh yeah, for the last two seasons, they decided to ditch the whole overarching story technique midway in favor for a seasonal approach. Essentially, they'll be a different story for each season. This didn't work out so well. You can't just like swap that kind of thing out of nowhere. Like that's literally the structure, the fundamental structure of your show. You can't just change that midway. It's not what the audience is used to and it doesn't give a lot of time to develop each story. During the overarching story, whenever something important happened, it had much more of an impact rather than when something important happens in the seasonal plot era. And all the change really did was confuse people. When the story starts to get unintentionally confusing in a story heavy show, that's not good. Nearly everything from the overarching story was forgotten and hardly ever mentioned again. But yeah, the biggest antagonist of the series was hardly mentioned in the last two seasons. You can't take the story that got the majority of the fans interested in the show, scrap it, and then do something completely different. That's just whack. To summarize, Season 3 and 4's seasonal story approach really only led to underdeveloped and uninteresting plot points. The setting change really only made the show lose a big part of why people enjoyed it. And the complete discardal of the previous story only caused confusion and disappointment. Underdeveloped stories means underdeveloped antagonists. Because now we get a new antagonist for each season. All the old antagonists? Nah, they literally do not exist anymore. And also, for a full half of season 3, we go without an antagonist. Why would you give away such big information in the official magic book of spells and then not do anything with it? And it plays directly into the overarching story that we have. This would have been the best continuation of the story and they did nothing with it. Throughout the last two seasons, there'll be random moments that just seem like the writers are stalling for time. And regarding the comedy, I believe that the comedy was the category that like stayed most consistent throughout the series. The show stayed pretty funny all the way through. The music is god tier, I love this man. That's one thing that never changed about this show. Brian H. came as a good lad. Battle for Muni is the only special event of the entire series. This event was the conclusion of the overarching story that was being set up for the first two seasons. Ending it here would have left it off at a high note. If Battle for Muni were the ending of the series, little loose ends that aren't too big can leave stuff to think about after the finale.